Uh, we, one of my biggest pet peeves with comic book art is when lazy artists reuse old art, usually by other artists, as like posters on walls or something on a television screen. Yesterday, we saw Wither from the excellent men's bedroom, and he had this cover as a poster on his wall. And it has been bothering me for 24 hours now. Whenever crappy artists do it, they always badly shrink the art down, and they poorly warp it to gain with their perspective. It looks awful. And then there is the other thing, which is, why would Wither have a poster of Dax on his wall? What company in the Marvel Universe is printing posters of this intergalactic serial killer whose defense of Coots Bluff in Alaska was covered up by the government? and whose new look would not be known by anyone besides the four surviving people who were directly involved with them in this story, only one of whom remains on Earth. Also, why does Wither have the worst cover of the miniseries on his wall? One thing I'm aware of is that my reviews for this mini-series have been preoccupied with the amount of advertisements included. And so I think for this final part, I'll try to avoid mentioning them. But if it looks like I am skipping a dozen pages at a time, it is because the adverts are breaking up the plot beats. Or things happening. We have our new reborn Dax. And on this page is the line of dialogue where we establish that he isn't green anymore. Something that is quickly ignored when he gans on to appear after this series ends. My belief is that. This was meant to be more corpse grey, but it's fairly bright teal here, and teal is close to green, so people missed this one page where a character points out that Dax is no longer green, and he just became green again. If I wanted a no prize... I would say maybe his drained colour here was because he was freshly resurrected and he soon became green again after this story as he took to his rebirth. Our story is that Dax was part of a prison transport ship that crash landed in the fictional town of Coots Bluff. The other prisoners have laid siege to this town, but this one teenage girl and a bedwetting pal, they have befriended Dax and have coaxed them into fighting against the other aliens. He died in his first battle with the aliens. And he was reborn as this aerodynamic stealth assassin Dax. And we get to see him in action this issue. Some of our enemies are the Mr. Blobby Brothers. Who are ad minions of Fanius. And we also have Lobo. Who has a complicated publishing history. That I got into in previous issues of this series. But I think I described it much better in a review of 
Defenders 50 Summit, which introduced this character, sort of, but not. They are being led, or at least organised, by Pybok, the Power Scroll. And the action sequences in this are honestly perfect. Dax fights Lobo here. He slices off his head. And then he picks it up and crushes it in his hands. Really great. In my review of issue 2 or issue 3, somebody said in the comments that it looked very decompressed. That there wasn't much writing on the page. That it looked like a comic you could get through in five minutes. It's not that bad for that. It is Kevin Griffin writing. It is a proper comic. You sink yourself into it and the world. You're not just flipping through it. When there is limited speech, you're still ganning with the ambience and the atmosphere. You're not turning the page straight away looking for the next bit of dialogue. Dax, he strings up Lobo's body to get the Mr. Blobby Brothers' attention. And then he starts fighting them needlessly with a big double page first hit. It does bother me a bit that there is no reference at all to Dax and the Mr. Blobby Brothers having fought before. But it is another great fight. And it actually results in one of my favourite little quirks for a few years. You see, Dax, he kills one of the Mr. Blobby brothers, stabs him in the brain. But the other one survives this fight. And he continues to show up by himself in comics after this. And that really tickles me. The idea with the Mr. Blobby Brothers is that the closer they are together, the stronger they each are. So for a few years, we just had one of them basically useless. But... He would show up by himself. Then bad writers and bad editors just had the dead one show up alive again. Our final fight is Dax versus Pybok, obviously. Except they didn't really fight. Pybok outwits Dax. And rather than fight him, Pybok has surrendered. He has alerted the space police to their downed ship. And he has turned himself over to them. He wants to be re-arrested so that he doesn't get his head squashed by Dax. But this means Dax is also... Ganon to get re-apprehended. So Pybok sort of wins. And then the next day, the government show up to cover everything up. And you can continue with Annie All Nation and see how Dax and the teenage girl Escape from Space Police Custody. So that is this mini-series complete. Dax scans on to star in Galactical Guardians after this. He is part of the Annie All Nation story. And this revamp of Dax is what wound up in the movies.
series. It is a really great mini series here. I think I will end by pointing out that Wither might have the best taste in the Marvel Universe. Not only does he think Emma Frosties is miles and miles better than Mary Sue Moonchild, but he would appear to like this miniseries too. So I think Wither would give this seven thumbs up.